Hello, welcome to Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. In today's video, I want to share with you a supply chain management file that I created in Excel that you can use to manage your supply chain, <laughs> as the name uh, implies. The file is basically a combination of previous um, videos that I created, each their own part, and here I'm actually grouping them to show you what you can do rather easily if you use all these tools. If you're new to this channel, my name is Elad and I've been using Excel and Google Sheets for more than 10 years and I am constantly uploading content about those two softwares. If you find that interesting, please hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss anything out. Now that we're finished with the intro, let's talk about uh, the file itself. So the file itself uh, consists of a few functionalities inbound delivery report production outbound delivery there are sheets transaction log inventory bill of material parameters and dashboard and exposed bill of material which is a simulation sheet you'll notice on top i have a ribbon customized ribbon for the supply chain management which basically uh, mimics the same thing so you can access this from any sheet if you want to learn how to easily create this ribbon just check out this video above i created about the office ribbon ribbon x which i very much recommend so the whole concept of this file is that you have user forms where you basically do something and everything is written in a transaction log so every action, inbound, outbound, delivery, or production, will populate this sheet. And um, that way we can use it for other sheets to track what's going on. And you see you have a home button that takes you here. The transaction log button takes you here. And you can also access it from here, which is very user friendly. So let's start with the parameters sheet. So in the parameters sheet, this is where you set up the supplier names, your raw materials, unit of measure, customers, your products, and your warehouses. And of course, you can add and all the drop down lists will uh, include whatever you have here. It's always looking for the last um, entry per column. So you just have to add your input wherever you want and everything will change. The define bill of material this is where you set up your bill of material and i support up to five levels here meaning you could have um, for example the dino toy it has this level then you can explode the head number one i think i put an example uh, of that there you go you see arm so arm number one explodes into finger and nail so whenever you want to explode the dino toy it will explode two arms and every time it explodes two arms it will explode ten fingers and ten nails as expected so this is where you set it up your bill of material so these are both important before you start things let's just start with the inbound delivery and you can see I can access it from here or I can go back to the home page and um, click on the button um, I'll later show exactly how to do everything so the inbound delivery, this is a user form, um, very basic one, but very, very friendly, very useful. If you're not familiar on how to use the user form, please check out this video about user forms where I really break down how to do it. I won't repeat it here. But what I do have is the date, always showing the date of today, drop down list of suppliers that you saw before and the parameters, uh, selection of warehouses where I defaulted to raw materials because I'm assuming in the inbound delivery we are receiving raw materials. Product, so I have a product list, what I received in unit or kgs, and the quantity, so I received uh, five heads and I received doll heads, yeah, don't get, don't get crazy, just doll heads. Um, and I got 20 legs. Once I click on the submit button, I'm going to get this message, inbound delivery added, 
and I can check the transaction log. All the way down, I have these three lines, the date, the, the, the supplier or customer, the item, the unit of measure, the quantity, which, which warehouse, and the inbound delivery, which is the transaction type. Now, let's say I want to um, produce something. So, um, let's say I have two customers, Toys Inc. I want to produce uh, 900 units of Dino Toy. So I get this pop-up message, not enough raw materials to process production. Okay, so in the code itself, I have a part that checks uh, if I have enough quantity in the inventory of the raw materials. Okay, so let's, so I don't have enough, so let's produce one. So once I click on submit, what actually happens, oh, I don't even have enough for one. So let's take an action hero. Okay, and I get this pop-up message. I don't know why I don't see it. Production order added. And now you see what happens when you produce an action hero. You have a plus one for the finished goods warehouse. And you have a negative for the raw materials that required for the action hero based on the bill of material that you defined over here. So to produce an action hero, I need this and this and this. So that you have basically a plus to the finished goods and a minus to the raw materials. That's how you produce the production. The outbound delivery, you select a customer. And again, the default is finished goods, unless you, you import and export and do nothing with the product. So you could just use the same warehouse. And you select, for example, an action hero. I want to report an outbound delivery. So I get this message, outbound delivery added, and I can see it here in the transaction log. Now it's from the finished goods. So I had the plus for production, the minus, uh, from the same warehouse, so I am um, balanced. So those are the three um, uh, main processes that I have here. And um, what you can also look at is the explode, sorry, the dashboard. Um, the dashboard is just a simple functionality that you can use. It has some pivot tables over here and pivot charts attached to them with slicers. Uh, I've done these type of things a lot of time and shared with, with you on many um, uh, videos. I'll attach an example if you want to see how to build this very easily. Um, I have all the backend, backend data over here. All the pivot tables are over here. They're all connected to the same slicers and just adding some pivot charts just as an example of what you can do. Um, let's just look at the explode bill of materials. So this is a simulation. Um, so you could use, you could take a look, for example, the dino toy. Um, so it shows you if it is possible or not. Too much, so I get this message that I can't because I only have 52. So um, you can use that for uh, simulating. Once you, once you, sorry forgot you need to click on this button and then you get the simulation that's why we got the pop-up message for the dino toy because we're out of nail X we're out of we're out of stock for that item I just forgot you have to click on this button and that will explode um, the bill of material so for if I just want to receive uh, nail X I can also key in of course so let's get Sorry, it should be unit. Let's get 50 units. And now when I click explode, although you saw already updated, but now everything looks okay. So um, these are all the functionalities. Now, if you're interested to learn how to build these things, stick around and let's deep dive into the VBA codes. Let's start with the easier part which is all of the um, moving between the sheets so 
moving between the sheets. Each of these is a very simple code. I will show you. So each of them you can see calls a function called select sheet and the relevant sheet in sheets. So it's par parsing um, a sheet, a specific worksheet. And this is the function for the select sheet. So um, I'm calling on high sheets, which is a function to you know loop through all of the worksheets in the workbook and just um, unhide them using uh, WD, which is the parameter for the worksheet, visible equals true. So um, I'm calling that just to make sure I don't have anything hidden, because if it's hidden, this won't work. I'm going to activate that worksheet that I call, that I want to select. And what I want to do now is hide everything apart from that worksheet. So again, a loop working on all the worksheets and with a simple if if the name is not equal to the name then I will hide it that's it that's the that's the very simple part of selecting the sheets now let's show you um, the uh, the user forms I mean I've talked about the user forms I want to see if there's something Specifically, mm, say different than the ones that I had before. Not here. Let's check production. Okay. Uh, I'll show you also the the, um, the function to explode the bill of material that you see over here. So it's actually quite simple. It's a double loop. Um, but you know what? I actually covered this in another video that I'll post right here that walks you through how to explode multiple bill of materials. So to make this work, you need to build user forms that have uh, functionality of pasting values in a other sheet, explode bill of materials, multi-level, parameters with some um, navigational buttons, and that's about it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you next time. Take care now.